laws to protect in our freedom and not fall the stupidity of the enemy, Lord. As we hear this word today in the class and in, in, in the front for our sermon, Lord, let the light just go off in our head that ignites something powerful and strong that spreads in this whole entire nation through each and every single body in here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, God, and Ms. Dillian's going to come up and preach for you today. We're going to receive this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just moving this up. All right, y'all give him a hand. Proverbs 18 and the 14th verse. And it 
say amen. 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 Make it happen. Okay. And he's going to nurture you. 
And he's going to encourage you. And no matter how bad it looks, the Spirit will tell you, you're bigger than that. You can make it. And you know, when you read around in your Bible, and you're having a pity party, and feeling sorry for yourself, you run upon that scripture say, when have you suffered to death? Like Christ did on the cross. Why are you a willy-nilly or crying baby? You had a little suffering, now you're whimpering and you're crying. This is a cross-carrying religion. It's not going to be easy every day. Amen. Amen. You know how they say on the gospel song, take your cross. You're going to get a cross sometime. Christ ain't get all the cross. It wouldn't be fair if he had the only cross. We have to go through things in life. That's why we need a strong spirit. Amen. God did not leave you hopeless. Like the Bible said, before we got saved, we was in the world, we were hopeless. We were lost. We had no hope. No chance that he come into our lives. Made alive our spirit like the King James said. Quicken our spirit. Amen. I just love the word like quicken. I mean, he made your life to move. Amen. God wants somebody to move and move ahead, not back. That's right. Amen. 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 And that same spiritual force that caused you to go ahead, the devil used it the opposite way to have you go back because he has no power. All the power, the power that the devil uses against you comes from you. Amen. 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 That's why he works on the mind. He's a con artist. Right. He cons you into fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, and your power works in reverse. Instead of the car going forward, it goes backwards. That's right. Because the engine is running. Amen. But anyway, God give you his Holy Spirit to, to put you over, to see that you succeed, to make you a success. God don't make no failure. You know, I like to say it like this. God is so good, church. Before, before he sent you out in the world the way he did, he sent his son Christ into the world Amen. with the same spirit. Amen. And everything he wanted to do in you, he did in Christ. Amen. And he succeeded completely. There was no failure in Christ. So he proved that the stuff that he put in you works. I like to tell it like where well, we can understand it. Like he was like our prototype. Like with the Ford Motor Company, when they said they want to make an off-road vehicle, they designed a special kind of transmission to go on any type of terrain. They designed a special rear end with pulling gears that lock and won't slip or climb any type of obstacle. And they put a steering system in it. And they call it an off-road vehicle. And they put a special type of engine in it right now with these transmission they got in. Some of them got, what, 12, 14 gears. And they success. Well, Christ came in our stead. And he proved that everything we have, we can make it. If we would only knuckle down and study our Bible. Amen. Amen. That's where our success is. The Amplified Bible says, The strong spirit of a man sustain him in bodily pain and trouble. The Message Bible says, A healthy spirit conquer adversity. You're going to have adversity in life. All these things you're going to face at some time in your life. Amen. 
That's why it's so vitally important that you strengthen your spirit. That you come to church when the church is You come to Bible class. You participate in prayer stuff meetings and study because it all helps your spirit. The stronger your spirit, the closer to God you can get. Amen. Amen. The more sensitive to God you become. Like I like to tell them in the church all the time, when you get home and you get quiet, that's when you hear God best. You can't hear God over a loud radio and TV and a lot, a lot of distortion and stuff. But sit still and be quiet for a little while. God will speak to your spirit. Amen. 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 But you have to be tuned. That's right. You have to be in tune. The Bible said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Well, what kind of mind he had? He prayed to the Father all day. Yep. He said, everything I say, I hear the Father say. Everything I do, I see the Father do it. The works that I do, he do the works. But like the works that I do, he do the works. This was not my idea. The last thing in life I ever dreamed of being was a minister. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This was not my idea. You know, I don't, don't, please don't think he was, as a little boy, say he wanted to be a preacher and stuff. You know, when I went to college, the one subject I dropped in college was speech. Because I didn't want to do what I'm doing. But it's not about you, and it's not about me. That's right. Amen. Amen. How many of you know everything Jesus did, he did for someone else? Amen. Amen. It's not about you. It's not about me. Like I like to tell them all the time. The devil attacked them for the word of God that's in their heart. The devil don't love you. You have nothing that the devil wants. He attacked you behind God's word. Amen. No word, no attack. <laughs> You're not a threat to him. He don't attack what's his. When you become a threat, then he attacks. And he has three purposes in life. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But anyway, we're going to look at another scripture right now. We're going to go to Romans 4 chapter, and we're going to look at the 24th verse. And I need it read to me out of y'all Bible. Y'all Bible reading is different from mine. I, I studied the old school King James. <laughs> You know the one with all the this, that, be, thou, those, inverted English? That's what I was nursed on, inverted English. Because I do have translation Bibles. But I try to meet most people where they are. Is it Romans what? Okay, let me, let me find my scripture. Romans, the fourth chapter, the 24th verse. Someone, when they get it, stand and read it for us. And don't be in no hurry. The Lord told me that, you know, I woke up this morning in a dream. And you know, it never guess what the dream was. I told Neil. I was sweeping on the cross. I was sweeping with a broom. I was removing the debris and the dust. And I was reaching way out, catching the edge. And when I went to get the front of the cross, it rocked. And I said, oh, you're going to fall. And I woke up from my dream. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's so, it's so accurate. And that's what I'm, I'm doing now. I'm sweeping the cross. I'm getting rid of all of the fables and fantasies about the cross. Everything Jesus did was for someone else. Everything we should do should be for someone else. Okay, that was 4 and the 24th verse. And it's not going to be long. Someone want to read it for us? Or you want me to read it out of my Bible? 
Mind read different from yours, though. Okay, I'll read it. Rise up in Jesus' name. Huh? I said, rise up in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay. Romans 4 and the 24th verse. And then read that follows. But for us also, to whom it shall be inputted, if we believe, let's use our faith, on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead. That's saying God will raise you up if you strengthen your spirit. And he's going to raise you up by your spirit by using his spirit. Make alive your dead spirit is what they're saying. And then we're going to go to John 16, 13. Okay. This is going to get you a little bit more on point. I turn right to it. I turn right to it. Someone want to read it to me out of the New King James? The NIV? Yeah, it's the NIV y'all using, isn't it? No, it's New, New King James. James. New King James, let's hear how it read. John 16, 
Right. You got to be full of His Word. That's right. And His Word has faith in itself. So now you're full of his word, you're full of his faith. Amen. They're synonymous. Like God and love. God and love. God don't love, he is love. That's right. He cannot help himself. Faith and his word are synonymous. Amen. That's like pain and hurt. Wet and water. I might get the cross to you. Amen. You can't have the wet without the water. You can't have the water if it ain't wet. You can't be full of hard word and not have faith. Because his word is faith. Right. They're containers of faith. So if you fill up on this word, you can ask what you will. Yeah. I believe the Bible. I don't know what y'all do. I believe the Bible. Amen. God will answer your prayer. <laughs> How I many of you see the answers pray? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's why I tell my family, if you need prayer, let Lynn know. Talk to me. That's what I do. God answered my prayer because I'm full of his word. And his word is faith. Amen. And the Bible says, if you're full of my word, you can ask what you will. Oh, it says like this. I, I, want, I want to read it to y'all like the scripture. If my word abide in you, I'm saying if you're full of my word, I'm bringing it down to the modern translation. But the Bible actually says, if God's word abide in you, you may ask what you will. That is sister. If his word live in you, not have residence only on Sunday morning. That's right. Or on Wednesday night, Bible study. His word has to live in you. Constantly in your spirit, mm -hmm. yes. full of His Word. That's right. Amen. You can ask what you will. Amen. Doesn't that mean something? Mm -hmm. That's why I tell them all the time in church. You got an advantage over the devil. That's right. <laughs> you got the advantage. Yes, he come at you all the time. Yes, he, but you got the advantage when he get too powerful for you. You just grab that go on. And introduce him to your God. Right. Amen. Praise God. You go on Nebon Valley. And you say, okay, Lord, I need you to do this. He's not going to do it unless you invite him to do it. Because you've got the authority in the earth. But once you invite him to do it, he will do it. Amen. You know, I'm reminded of that instance in the Bible. I'm letting the Holy Ghost lead me. There was a man walk up to Jesus. He said, if thou wanted to, thou could make me clean. Jesus said, I want you to be clean. Instantly, not a second thought. He want to answer your prayers. And nothing would make him happier. You just got to meet the criteria. Amen. You just got to meet the criteria. He want to. God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He came in the person of Christ to show you his father. And why Jesus said, when you see me, you see the father. Amen. 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 So, back to the spirit, like, the, like we said, the lesson was on the spirit. God gave you that spirit for a reason. And that's for you to overcome any adversity in life. You shouldn't be stuck in the mud. With the equipment you got, you should go through the mud. You should go through the rain. You should go through the storm. Yes. The engine should never stall. That's right. Huh? Hallelujah. You are equipped. And God come in a person and tried it out. So he know it works. Amen. That's why he say the trying of your faith is more precious than gold. Amen. Because he know you're going to succeed. Then he uses his spirit to show us things to come. You know, when the pandemic was so bad, I could see that it was going to pass. How many of you knew that it wasn't going to last forever? Amen. Amen. COVID-19. Right. Amen. It wasn't going to last forever. It had a beginning, Amen. and it will have an end. Amen. You just have your faith in God and stay firm 
in God. Be rooted and grounded in God. The anchor will hold in spite of the storm. You got an anchor. Right. And like I said, when the adversary come at you like a storm or like a flood, God will raise up a standard. But you got to know God. And you got to know what it takes to move God. It takes faith to move God. Amen. Tears don't move God. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Doubt don't move God. Fear don't move God. Worry don't move God. Need don't move God. Faith moves God. Why? Because he's a faith God. Amen. And you have to get with the program and get in faith. And God will move. God. Amen. The, the Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Okay? That's where I wanted to get back to Jesus. When God created this universe, he said he called light from darkness. He said, light be, and it was. Okay, the Bible said the entrance of this world brings light. Amen. Well, we couldn't see our way out, our dilemma. Now we have a light to see our way out. A lamp unto our feet. Amen. Amen. So we should never be in doubt which way to travel. How's our way out of a dilemma? Or a bad time. And we need to tell ourselves this too shall pass. Amen. Huh? Weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. You're going to have weeping and you're going to have joy. The Bible said that time and season for all of these things. The Gospel of John tells us Jesus was the light. The life and love. Three powerful L's up. Light, life, and love. Now there's many religions out there today, but how many of them can claim they came to bring life? And a Zoe life, not a normal life, a high and uplifted life. You know, there used to be a song we would sing in the sanctified church. I used to belong to one of them called uh, Pleasant Grove. In the word of God, I found a higher place. You don't have to live down in low bar. You can get a hold of God's word and move to a higher place. Amen. Then the Bible will stop there and say, think on things above. Don't think on things around you or below you. That's not your standard. That's right. You know how we like to say it in the word. You're bigger than that. Amen. Amen. Think on lovely things. Think on just things. Think on pure things. There's many things going on in the world today that's just not right. Don't think on those things. That's right. Think on whatever is just. Whatsoever is lovely. Whatsoever is pure. Whatsoever is a good report. One might ask preacher, what's a good report? The good report is Christ came, hung, bled, and died so you don't have to live like that. You can live above your circumstances, not below them. Amen. 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 You ought to be on top of your circumstances. Like that song on the radio, live on top of the world. Amen. Amen. You can do that if you get in God's word. You can find out how to live on top of the world. Now we, I want to be, we go to another scripture. This one is a strong one. I just looked at it a few minutes ago. Galatians, the fifth chapter. From verse 22 to verse 26. You know, the, the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And like I got a, a, a series of teaching texts at home, and I love the preacher so well. I went to see him in Alexandria, Louisiana, and I knew he was going to be great then. 
and he got off the chain since then. His name is Mark Hankins. He's a third generation preacher. But what that mean, preacher? His grandpa was a preacher. His daddy was a preacher. And now he's a preacher. And uh, I went to see him in, what's the name of that town? Alexandria, Louisiana. He was a pastor at that time. And I listened to that man, and I knew he was going to be a good minister. Well, since then, he has retired from the ministry. He gave his son to the church to his son. And now he traveled the world teaching pastors and preachers how to be better leaders and God. teachers. And uh, he's got a series of tapes. And I'm, I said all that to say this simple thing. He said, if you get friends with the Holy Ghost, he's a genius. He'll make you appear smarter than what you are. By fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, he'll make you wise. The foolish things you used to think of, meditate, you, you leave them alone. Because you discover that they are foolish. Okay, Galatians 5, from verse 22 to the last verse. All these things are, they belong to you. But you have to develop these things. They don't come out automatic. Amen. Amen. Someone want to read them? Or y'all want me to read them? Okay, I'll read them. Am I rushing them? Tell me if I'm rushing them. Maybe I'm, I'm really rushing them. Okay, we're going to give them some more time. I don't want to feel like I'm dragging it out of you. I want you to be comfortable. All right, amen. Uh -huh. amen. Okay, somebody want to read it for us? From verse 22 to 26, that'll be four verses. Read them slow. Read one verse at a time and let it saturate your mind and read another one. Then give it a, a minute let that saturate your mind and read another one. Then, then we'll go on and finish it out. Do we have a reader? I don't mind reading it. Has everybody found it? Okay. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelt. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Remember we said that love is synonymous with God. You see, He's first. And we need to come to understand it. He is first in all things. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. How I many you want joy? Amen. Peace. Amen. That's another good thing to have. Huh? Yes. Priceless. Yes, Long suffering. Yep. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Boy, that's very necessary. That word there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did we say faith the cause? Let's see who was listening. What faith would do to your life? It'll put you in touch with the supernatural. You call on God, He will answer. Amen. You ain't got to say, I wonder if He's going to answer that. Mm -hmm. Remember that scenario I said? That man told Jesus, If you want to, you can make me whole. He said, I want to. Let that be clear. I want to. Yeah. Okay, this word here at the end of that verse there faith. That opens the door to the supernatural. In all your situations, not some of them, not the majority of them, but all of them. So that means that's a way out of any situation. Like Shirley Caesar said, there's a way in, there's a way out. Amen. Huh? And I come to show you the way. Amen. 
There's a way into a certain circumstance or situation. There's one out too. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You can't go wrong. Praise God. And that's set, set your into mind. There is no law against those meekness, temperance, and stuff. Now, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. I mean, put the flesh to death. We don't walk in the flesh no more. We walk in the spirit. That's right. The spirit gives life. That come from heaven. That come from above. Remember I say, think on things above? Amen. That higher place? We are not low lives anymore. We were low lives when we were without God. We were lost in the world. Been there, done that. Right. Now we're doing a new thing. Amen. amen. You might as well say amen or say out because we've been there. Crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit. Amen. 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 Let us also walk in the spirit. Right. In other words, we live in the spirit, let's behave like it. Amen. Let's behave like it. If we full of God's word, we can ask what we will. That's right. What you will. What would you really like to have right now? I know what I would really like to have right now. I know. I ain't got a second guess. And don't think I hadn't been asking either. Don't think I hadn't been asking. I want me a new ram truck. <laughs> With the Hemi engine. Amen. That's uh, what I want. I let my cat out the bag, didn't I? No, we in agreement with you. Amen. Uh, I want me a new ram truck. I can say, Lord, I'm going to preach your word every three, four days. That truck break it. We can, be, we can do better than that. He said, okay, then what would you like? I'd like to have a ram with everything in it. He said, what you, what kind of, I said, the best they made. Huh? I give you my best, Lord. Uh, why should not expect the best? Huh? God. Amen. And the Bible said, we be full of his word. We can ask what we want. And we don't have to be ashamed to ask. But we got to be faithful where his word is concerned. We got to conduct ourselves as his ministers and as saved people, not lost people. Amen. We got to remember who we represent. People look at your life. People study your life. Say that one there is a Christian. And I don't see no difference in that one than anyone else. Look, they're fighting out there in the yard right now. <laughs> They got that loud music. You can hear 17 blocks down the road. Amen. Amen. You can't do that no more. You got to get rid of all of that. Okay. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. That's right. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So what you're saying, brother preacher, we don't have to be down to what you think anybody else. And when God blessed me with that new ram truck, don't be he jealous. Ask him right. for one too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't say that man think he suddenly got that new truck. You got the same rights and privilege too. Amen. You have not because you ask not. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you how to ask him. You see that you sweep around your front door. Keep yourself together. Right. Stay in God's holy word. Mm -hmm. Put his word in your heart. If my words abide in you, That's right. you can ask what you will. And I even went another step. I told you what I will. And don't believe for me that I have not asked. Now, it don't come instant. You might have to That's wait a right. minute. Amen. But if you stay in faith, what's going to happen? It's going to come. I didn't hear you. It's going to come. If you stay in faith, That's right. if, you let the, if you let the devil come in and tell you, 
You ain't gonna get that. You said a curse word the other day, and you 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 was gossiping about somebody, and you didn't live perfect. It has nothing to do with you getting your gift. Right. You repent when you sin. Amen. And you move on. Amen. And God doesn't even remember it. That's right. Huh? That's right. And if you bring it back up to him a second time and say, which one? That's right. Because he can completely forgot. Amen. We carry that extra baggage. Yeah. Not God. If you fall down, get up. Clean yourself off and go on. That's right. Don't be defeated. God didn't make you to be defeated. He didn't make you to be defeated. And you know how many times I think about this, God must be sitting back in heaven and when we fall down, he calls his angels and says, Angels, look at my servant. And they see you getting up and they know what's coming next. You're going full speed ahead. That's right. Where that demon went back there, yeah, I'll show him something. God said, now that's my spirit. You see that? I'll get that devil. Where did he go? And he runs. He because he's a coward. Right. And he realized he has no power. All he can do is get you to work your power against you. Amen. And like I like to tell him from the pulpit all the time, don't be hung from the tongue. Don't let him talk you into using your power to go in reverse. Because he can't get make you go forward. He doesn't have a forward gear. God got the forward gear. He only has the reverse. <laughs> so when you drive, go forward. It ain't hard to take deep or profound. Go forward. Your future's ahead of you. It's not behind you. When you go to bed tonight, let the day be gone. Amen. Tomorrow's a new day. Right. With enough trouble and adversity of his own. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I, I often wonder how people go to bed mad at somebody on Monday and you get up on Tuesday and you're still mad at them. <laughs> how do you work that? The Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That means when you get by your bed and you make your bed at night before you lay in it, let that go. That's right. You may keep it up to then. Mm -hmm. But when you get to your bed, you know you fluff your pillow up, you get your bed prepped up for you to lay down and get rest. How can you rest with that burden? Man. <clears throat> you ain't got to be a scholar to know that. Let it go. Amen. And sometimes it's hard. That's when we get on our, that gives us a reason to pray. A lot of the time we need a reason to pray. Because we tend to forget there is a God. We get so caught up in the mundane things in life, we tend to forget that there's a divine being waiting to fellowship with us and to just hear our voice. Because he's a loving parent. Amen. And he's mesmerized with us. How many of you know God is mesmerized with you? Amen. You're special to God. Amen. Huh? And right. he's waiting to hear from you. Yes, Lord. And now you've got this unforgiveness in your heart. Before you go to bed, you've got to clear your heart in order to get good rest. But that's a good reason for you to commune with your father. And say, Father God, I'm having trouble. I went through some adversity today. And it's, it, it was something. And I've been wrestling with it since then. I was in that predicament a while back. Something happened to me, and I didn't, I couldn't shake it. It kept coming up, it kept coming up. I push it back down and come back up. I push it down again and come back up. So what you need to do then? You go on your knees, you go to deep, deep bone valley, and you say, Father God, I forgive this person, but I forgive them by faith. And I want you to work with me so I can forget. And you don't forget overnight. That's right. You got to get over that hurt. Yep. It has to heal. But every time it comes in your mind, and you know when it comes, you're going to get that ill feeling in your lower intestines. Right. You ask God to forgive Amen. you. Yeah. 
And you Lord. tell him, say, Father, I forgive him that person. That's right. And I hold no grudge against him. Lord, hello. But I still remember what they did. Right. And the Holy Ghost will tell you, that's good. Don't let them do it again. I'm not telling you not to, to, not to love them. I'm just telling you, be on guard and watch them. That's now right. you know what they're capable of doing. Amen. Amen. And when you see that person, you still have to love them. Right. And you still have to acknowledge them. But by all means, don't let your guards down. Because two to one, they're going to do the same thing. Yep. Amen. As I've seen a beehive, and you know the bee is in there, and after the bee stung you one time, go back and get stung again. That's not too smart. Right. That's not too smart. But anyway, <coughs> that's going to bring you. My lesson to the end. And I want to say that y'all been a wonderful, wonderful class. And meditate on it. the spiritual realm, the spiritual world is more real than the one you see. You know, we learn things through our sense gates, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our touch. But there's another world out there that's invisible. And the Bible said that world is eternal. <coughs> and it's more real than the world we're familiar with. Amen. Amen. And we need to be mindful of the spirit and the spirit realm. And live out of your spirit, not out of your flesh. Because to live out of your flesh is death. The end of that, that, that it's going to bring is death. But if you live out of your spirit, it's going to bring eternal life and success. Yes. And you get all your prayers answered. So you say, you be saying, what have I got to worry about? Life really is good. Amen. And I'll Amen. turn you back to your pastor. Thank, Thank you, Lord. So Hallelujah.